The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, this is Will Cooper with InfoWise. Thanks everybody for joining today for our presentation on doing a leave request system in SharePoint. Uh, we do have still have some folks joining our meeting, um, so we do want to uh, give an opportunity for everybody to uh, get logged in and uh, settled in. While we're waiting for uh, everybody to, to get in here, uh, I'll just kind of do a quick intro. Um, so my background uh, is um, in uh, .NET uh, development, but I've been doing SharePoint, I guess, for about eight years now. And um, I uh, do quite a lot with the uh, InfoWise product. Um, I really love uh, building uh, solutions in SharePoint. And um, I work with various customers to uh, help them set up uh, business automation tools in SharePoint. And today, of course, we're going to take a look at doing a leave request system. Um, in regard to the system I'm going to show you, um, I use um, a, a lot of tools that are available through uh, InfoWise Ultimate Forum. So I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about how you're able to use that and how you're able to build a uh, solution without having to do any custom code. Um, one thing I really like about that is how easy it is to do things. Um, really, everything can be done uh, through configuration menus, um, and um, it's flexible. Uh, there's a lot of settings and things you can do with that. Um, so I hope to kind of walk through and, and uh, show you how you're able to use those tools and um, how it can help you to, to uh, create a solution like this in SharePoint. Um, before we get into the presentation, I do want to just give some quick uh, information to you. One thing I want to be sure not to forget, we are going to provide a um, free uh, polo shirt, InfoWise shirt, um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, so please do be sure to stay on uh, for our drawing at the end. Um, they're awesome shirts. Uh, it has an embroidered logo on it. And, um, you know, Every one of my friends who has one of those, they love to wear it. So that's a, a cool prize. So be sure to stick in for the end. I'm going to move kind of quick through my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, the way to get those to us is to use the um, questions interface um, in your sidebar in the uh, GoToWebinar interface. Uh, we love to get questions from you. And we really would love to have the opportunity to answer any questions you have about the product. If for any reason today during the presentation we don't uh, answer your question completely or you want more information, uh, please reach out to us. Um, you can just go to the InfoWise site. Um, and uh, what you can do is either uh, just reach out to us, sales at InfoWiseSolutions.com, or uh, you can even sign up uh, for your own personalized demo um, if you're uh, wanting to uh, dig deeper and um, you know, move forward to learn more about the product. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into our presentation. Um, so what we're trying to do here is have an automated uh, leave request and tracking system in SharePoint. So there's uh, kind of two parts to this. I'm going to kind of outline some of the business requirements um, in our solution, and I'm going to show you from a user perspective how this will work. Um, and then as we get further along, I'm going to talk to you about uh, how it is that you go about creating this type of solution uh, using some of the InfoWise uh, settings and configuration. So the system that I've set up, uh, this is just a simple SharePoint site. Um, and I have a couple of lists. So the way the overall solution is going to work, we want to facilitate uh, for anybody in the organization to make a uh, leave request. And um, basically they would, you know, need to put in the days they want, you know, for vacation especially, and uh, submit that. And then uh, we want to have a, a simple approval sign-off process so that, um, you know, we can be sure that um, the manager is aware and they've, they've okayed that and that type of thing. Um, so the request system is one side of that, that'll have its own list, and then the other part of this um, is going to be uh, utilized by our HR department, and this is the actual um, system of record, if you want to think of it uh, that way. This will be um, actual entries of approved vacation, and in that list, we want to do some tracking. Um, you know, we want to see how many hours and days have been used compared to, um, you know, what's available to particular employees. 
Um, so that's the general concept we're shooting for. Also tied to this, we've got a uh, calendar. We want to be able to look on a calendar, uh, have something available. So, um, you know, I might be able to check as an employee and see, you know, who's going to be out on vacation. Dashboards are really important in SharePoint. Um, in SharePoint, pages can look kind of blah and boring. And uh, one thing that's awesome with these tools is we can set up these really great um, indicators that just give a nice visual representation of what's going on. So on my home page here, I have a list uh, which is personalized to me. So um, in these views, you, we can use you know, the me parameter and um, I can make it where it's just gonna show my particular request instead of you know, seeing, seeing everybody's request. Um, so let me start out uh, by going into the leave request and um, I'm gonna put on my employee hat and I'm going to submit a request because I want to take some vacation. Uh, I think all of us want to take some vacation this summer. Okay, um, so right off the bat, you're going to notice this doesn't look like uh, out of the box SharePoint. I've got a tabbed uh, form, and this is what InfoWise lets you set up really easily. Um, I just want to make this easier for the user. So we kind of have some automatic functionality. Notice, when I open the form, it automatically defaulted my name. Um, so it's collecting the current user. I didn't have to do any scripting for that. I'll show you later. That's just a simple configuration setting. Um, I'm going to put in my manager is Vladi, and I want to take my uh, vacation in August. So I'm going to take some time off that. So um, as the employee, you know, I've got this easy interface to work with. So let's do first week in August and then of course, when you're tracking time off, there's all kinds of different categories and things. Um, certainly, if you're an HR person, you can appreciate the fact that you've got to do tracking and uh, differentiate between those different things. So um, I've got a drop down. You can assign whatever values you want. And um, notice I've also kind of got a, a, a icon tied to that. So I'm just going to do vacation. And what's going on here is I actually have uh, an associated items list. And this is another thing that we can do with InfoWise that's really simple. Um, I can have a many to one relationship uh, between two different lists. So I have a list uh, for these leave request um, line items and I don't have to leave the form or anything like that. I can just go through here and you know enter my items. This is good because things aren't just always as simple as I'm taking a week off, right? Uh, sometimes somebody takes a couple of days off, they take a half day off. Uh, we have different situations to come up. It could be a sick day. Uh, it could be the child was sick, um, jury duty, all kinds of different types of things we need to account for. But in terms of building the system, it's simple. We're just gonna create a, a choice with some icons uh, tied to that. So. Uh, for my example, I'm just going to keep it really simple. We're going to say I'm going to do three days of vacation. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do one more day for August 8th. Put that in. Eight more hours. So I don't even have to open up a, another, you know, typical SharePoint list form. It's doing it in line for me, which is pretty cool. Okay, and another thing we've got is a signature field. So that's new. That's not in SharePoint normally. Um, there's different ways you can configure this. Um, the simplest way is checkbox, but you can also do where they actually can sign with the mouse or something like that. So um, this is nice because it gives us a date timestamp and we ensure that it was actually the right person uh, doing the request. And then our default status is just gonna be requested. Okay, that's all we have to do. So that's important because this isn't a very good system if the employee has to do very much, right? If, if unless it's simple, they're gonna get confused and it's just not gonna be really easy to work with. Um, so on their end, they just fill out the simple form, that's all they gotta do. Now what we'd like to do in here is wanna have some email alerts and kind of have like a, a prompt, right? Mm -hmm. If they make a request, somebody needs to know because they're gonna have to do something. Um, so in this system, we do have a simple um, approval type system. So I'll show you how um, InfoWise lets you do some really nice email alerts here in a second. Um, but first, 
let me talk to you about the intended steps. Notice we've got a couple of fields, approver one signature, approver two signature. Um, I have a couple more signature fields. So this would be for the manager. So, um, you know, we can make that email alert go out. I'll just put my name in here just for test purposes. Um, but basically, uh, they can just check that box. And uh, so we can kind of have a, a sequential approval process, if you will. You know, usually you need some kind of approval when somebody is requesting vacation time. Okay, notice the signature field here changes. It gives me a nice date timestamp and it shows uh, who was the person who uh, did that sign off. Also, uh, we've got some automatic calculation on that list. So I did three days at eight hours. It gives me the total hours for that. So once the approvals are all set, uh, notice I have one uh, earlier, got our approvals. Um, basically, uh, we could update status and say, okay, looks like that's approved. Uh, we got our signatures. And so once the request goes through, basically that is the trigger for our system uh, where we can let HR know uh, to go ahead and enter this into the leave tracking system. Okay, so let's take a look at that list real quick. General concept here is for our employees, we would like to think of things on a yearly basis, right? Um, you know, depending on how long you've worked at a company, you know, typically you have two or three or four weeks, depending on um, seniority, um, you know, various factors. So uh, we need to have that in the system because we're trying to account for um, how many hours have been used up, how many are left, things like that. We want HR to manage this. So one thing we would certainly want to do is make sure that the um, security is set on this list so that HR can manage this information. Um, one thing we can do is make this information readable uh, for that particular uh, employee. Okay, so in this system, uh, basically uh, we take the year and we fill in kind of some information about the employee and this just gives us a roll up of all the different days that employee's taken off, their total hours for the year. This is what I referred to earlier as the uh, system of record, okay? Um, just like the other list, we've got the many to one relationship. So I can enter uh, multiple days in here and I can even get, you know, granular if I want to. I could put in a half day of four hours or whatever. I can be very specific. Um, we've got the employees department, uh, which year this is for. Um, sometimes you have a concept of carryover days, you know, from the preceding year. Um, so considering these are intended to be one record per employee year. Um, you can kind of uh, enter the number when you start the next year of uh, any hours they carried over, that kind of thing. Okay, um, so this is what HR is going to do. And then we get some uh, cool indicators here. So you see this bar on the side. What that's showing us is basically, it's kind of like how much gas is left in the tank as their employees using hours um, compared to you know what they have available that bar is going to go down so this helps because you know hr can make sure that somebody doesn't you know take two months of vacation when they actually were supposed to you know only have two weeks available that type of thing so that bar is going to go down automatically and that's all automated based on those automatic calculations of of hours um, one thing that's cool uh, through calculated fields uh, we can do some calculations. We have an accrual rate, and then based on where we are in the calendar year, um, it can do a calculation for us. Okay, so that's generally how the system works. What I really want to show you is the stuff that's most exciting to me, which is how easy it is to uh, apply these settings and how you can kind of go from the plain vanilla world of out-of-the-box SharePoint uh, to these dynamic forms where you can uh, get these indicators, um, get email alerts, um, and get some of this automation um, that you want and, and to be able to do it without having to, uh, you know, write code, go through any headaches, have to use SharePoint Designer or uh, other tools, stuff like that. That generally takes a lot of extra steps and works, and that's not really the kind of thing that uh, most of us want to have to do. 
So InfoWise Ultimate Forms deploys uh, completely inside of your SharePoint interface. That's really important. The reason it's so important is because you don't have to take a lot of extra steps. You can get to your settings fast. Um, it's right there um, in your screen. It's really just the same as going to the list settings screen. Um, so everything you do is going to be from the context of the list. You have a couple ways to get to the settings. I'm in an on-premise SharePoint environment at the moment. Um, all of these uh, tools and abilities, um, all the full functionality is in for both for Office 365 and for on-premise. Um, but if I go in to this puzzle piece icon from the ribbon menu, this is the hub, if you will, for the InfoWise settings. This is the InfoWise uh, settings screen. And this gives you a menu of all these tools. This is this like I'm opening up the toolbox and these are all the many things you can do. The first thing that you're going to want to um, experiment with um, and really to me in many ways it's the most fun is the um, tab set up, you know, laying out the form and also the um, those icon fields. OK, so in InfoWise we have something called a color choice field. And this is a replacement of the SharePoint regular choice field, which is where you do a drop-down list. And instead of doing a drop-down list, uh, what I can do is take choices and replace them with icons. We've got a lot of uh, different types of icons you can do. Um, so when I go in here, uh, let me put something in there. Okay. When I go in here, um, I basically can map things. You know, typically when you're doing status and things like that, you kind of have a good, medium, bad, um, and you, you want to have something that goes to that. There's actually 250 different icons you can pick. Um, and this really helps tremendously with dashboards. This is a part of the recipe that I use in every InfoWise solution that I make. There's really no reason that you wouldn't include these. Um, so, you know, with these tools, anytime you're going to do a choice field, instead you're going to get this much better option and it's going to be visually appealing. And it is literally just clicking on the icon and then from that point forward, it's going to show on the dashboard and in the form uh, right next to whatever choices you put. There's another option you can do, uh, like colored background if you want, um, if you want to assign uh, colors to it. Um, that, that's another way you can do it. Um, you know, both of them help you make a nice dashboard. Okay, so that's one of the simplest, easiest things you can do, you know, within a minute after you start using this. Um, in terms of the form customization, the tab configuration is important. And the reason that it's so important is because with these solutions, um, you know, in SharePoint, if you end up with 15, 20, 30 fields, you quickly end up with this long scrolling form. Uh, not very nice to look at, not user friendly, um, and not flexible in any way. Uh, as far as creating your customized form, you just uh, come into this tab settings area and you can create tabs just as simple as type a name for tab and click add and it will show up in here. And once I have that in there, it shows you in this menu a list of the columns and you just map them over. That's all I gotta do. So I say, oh, I just want these three. And then if I wanna reorder it, I just do that. So you really don't even have to get into any heavy training or uh, learning um, when you're first using these tools just to do these basic configuration setups. Um, this is going to let you split out your form into tabs, and that way you're giving a user kind of a step-by-step -step process, if you will, where they kind of go for the first section, um, then move over to the second section, things of that nature. In terms of the look and feel, uh, we have pre-configured themes, uh, so we kind of get some different fonts, colors, spacing, um, stuff like that. Um, you can just pick from these out-of-the-box themes, and it's just a way to improve the... Uh, user interface and kind of get away, like I say, from the, the plain vanilla out of the box SharePoint. There's many other options from this screen. Um, one thing that's cool about the product is 
it's really easy to get started with it, but there is a tremendous amount of depth. So um, I like that it has that level of accessibility. So um, just as you're getting going with this, um, you can very quickly do some custom configuration um, in terms of building these tools. Um, and then as you get more experience with the product and you get more comfortable, you can continue to dig deeper and deeper. And ultimately you can build uh, really sophisticated solutions um, according to how far you wanna push the product and tools. Okay, so there's the tab settings area. Um, so let's talk about uh, some of the setup um, configuration. So that you can tell that's important because that's the first section in the uh, settings screens. Um, another thing you can do, um, column permissions allow you to uh, change accessibility of fields uh, based on a couple of concepts. Um, when you think of permissions, of course, first you're thinking about uh, SharePoint security and different groups and things like that. Um, this would be important in this kind of solution because we have some different roles. Uh, we have our basic employee role, uh, we have managers, and we have uh, people who are in HR. Okay, so when you think about this type of solution, those different roles are going to need to be able to have different levels of access in this type of system, okay? Um, so the other thing you can do is according to certain conditions. Um, and these type of uh, tools, there's a process that we're going through, right? Um, it's kind of a pipeline. Their request gets submitted, um, it goes through approval, um, and then it's entered by HR on another list. Depending on what's going on, we may need to change the form. For example, after the uh, vacation is approved, you know, we don't want the employee to you know, be able to go in there and add more vacation days to the request, things of that nature. You can set conditions um, using column permissions, which will change uh, how the form behaves based on those rules. So instead of the static form, which is kind of your out-of-the-box SharePoint functionality, where it basically looks the same and does the same thing every single time, and in many cases you only enter it one time, you have the ability to change how the um, how the how it works, how the functionality works, depending on where you are in the process. So in the case of our form, um, I could do something, for example, uh, like say. Uh, let's see, I can make it where um, requester, you know, you can't change that um, it, or it becomes readable uh, when status, whoops, status equals approved, something like that. Um, notice I'm doing it through configuration. I don't have to write any code. And uh, what I can do is basically just click the um, add button and it would show up in the menu at the top. Okay. Uh, so another thing that kind of goes hand in hand with that is uh, validation rules. When you're working with your list in SharePoint, usually you're just kind of thinking about um, things being required or not required. Uh, not a very flexible concept, at least in terms of what SharePoint normally would give you. Uh, with InfoWise, you can... Uh, define you know, uh, more specific rules about um, maybe at a particular part in the process something's required. So for example, we were talking about approved. Uh, if you recall, we had a couple of signature fields and we need to have those uh, signed off on uh, before the, um, you know, before we want the status to be able to go to approve. So we can actually set up validation against that and ensure that that would never happen. Basically that the status can't change for that. Um, so uh, what I could say is status not equals uh, approved. And I can even type out a message here. I could say status can't be approved until both approval signatures, whatever message I want. I can update this anytime. And then I can do a check. So I can do uh, approver one signature equals yes. And I can add another role and say also approver two signature equals yes. Okay. And 
once I've added that in there, um, it will give me a validation error. So if I don't have those approvals yet, so we can uh, basically kind of like capture those different situations so that we never get invalid uh, data or somebody doing an action that we don't want them to. Um, so validation is uh, really beneficial. Now behind that, if you guys uh, think in terms of automation, you have to have some kind of workflow engine. You have to have uh, some kind of way to define steps and especially have triggers. Um, uh, especially if you look at some of the things that are going on with Microsoft right now uh, in terms of uh, flow um, or uh, other types of systems, or if you use SharePoint Designer to do SharePoint workflows, uh, you know that um, in terms of logic and using things in SharePoint, uh, basically, if you are wanting to build anything but the most simple solution, you have to have some ability to do that. SharePoint Designer and SharePoint Workflow um, really are, are a hassle. There's a lot of layers to, to it. Typically, it's developer kind of tasks. It's not easy to work with. It hasn't evolved. And furthermore, we know they're not even going to make a new version of SharePoint Designer um, past the 2013 version. Uh, so we really need to <clears throat> think in terms of a more accessible uh, solution. All right, so with the InfoWise, uh, you have a very robust uh, area to define that type of logic. And all the types of things that you might do as a user or that you might want to do in workflow, those are all accessible to you right from the actions interface. Uh, most typically, what I would want to do is uh, do things like update items uh, in SharePoint. Uh, but as we mentioned earlier, I'd like to do things like, um, here, let me put something in here. Uh, So what happens is once I create the column, it's going to store these settings in here. And these are all the different uh, types of actions that can trigger. So uh, we had mentioned we need to have emails go out. Uh, you get a trigger for that. Uh, we can do things even um, as interesting as creating sites and lists. Um, we can uh, do PDF output. That's another InfoWise capability. If you guys like to do reporting, uh, you can set up templates for that. and um, we can automate that. We can trigger that just based on a button and the user interface. Um, so many different types of things. I've got the configuration to do that. Again, I'm not having to write any custom o uh, code to do these actions. Um, basically, like I say, I just need to define a trigger. Um, I define which uh, forms this would occur in uh, and what the condition is. Uh, for example, if uh, status after change equals approved, you know, we want the uh, email to go out, right? Um, and then the action settings, um, that's going to include uh, what it is that I want to do, okay? Um, so that's a really uh, powerful piece of functionality. And what I had mentioned earlier is it's embedded directly in your SharePoint interface. Um, really just a couple of clicks away, um, I can go through and set up an action. One aspect of that that's really important is when you're building these solutions, you need to check uh, your results continuously as you are building to make sure it's doing exactly what you want it to be doing. And that uh, being able to quickly get to the setting, apply the setting, come back and test your form and kind of get that tight uh, circle um, is absolutely critical. Um, and I can tell you, um, in my development experience, having built solutions um, utilizing InfoWise tools over the last four to five years, um, it, it makes my job uh, so much easier. I get that immediate confirmation uh, that the form and functionality is doing what I expect it to do. Or if I get off track a little bit, um, I can make that adjustment. Um, if I were trying to do the workflow in SharePoint Designer, it would be a completely different story. Much slower and more cumbersome. So um, I really have found that I rarely have to use that at all anymore, um, you know, having these tools available. Another thing I'll show you real quick, um, which is just one of many of the other tools that you get in here, um, there is an InfoWise uh, calendar, uh, which greatly extends upon the uh, plain uh, SharePoint calendar that you get out of the box. 
Um, so what you're seeing here is a consolidated calendar of um, all the uh, vacation days and leave for various employees. So you can see this would be beneficial um, if I might want to see who's going to be out um, particular weeks, especially as a manager. In the top, you see a uh, filter option. Um, so I can uh, pick uh, from various departments because you can see how this month view otherwise uh, could get very crowded. Um, so we have that. And then um, we have a lot more different views. So uh, with SharePoint, you know, normally you're probably looking at the month or day view or something like that. But also we have uh, we have a Gantt view. Um, so we have different ways we can look at our data. There's a lot of different ways that you could implement this system. Um, and that just speaks to the flexibility of what the tools are. Um, I think every organization probably would have uh, slightly different business requirements in terms of what their business rules are related to leave requests. And with this product and with these tools, um, this gives you the flexibility to do that. But again, with no, without having to do custom programming. So what I, what I want to talk about real quick, and then we'll quickly get to the um, shirt giveaway. Um, I want to just talk about um, how you can further explore these tools because I really want you to experience some of that, not you know necessarily just take my word for it. Um, so with InfoWise, trying it out it's really easy and you know risk free pretty much. Um, the trial is something you get; it's full functionality. Um, if you just click on the big orange button there, um, it tells you what to do. So if you're on premise. Uh, shoot us an email and we'll get the installer going for you and uh, you get the full product so you can just install it on your SharePoint form and try it out. With Office 365, um, that's using an app model. Um, we give you step-by-step -step installation instructions and then you can just install the app on uh, you know, a practice site and your tenant and you can start using the tools uh, right away. So that doesn't uh, cost you any money, you're not limited in any way, and really that's kind of the best next step uh, to uh, try out the tools. Um, and then in terms of kind of ramp up at that point, there is a lot of information where we're going to empower you and give you the ability to learn this stuff um, without feeling uh, kind of confused and out on your own. Uh, in the training section, uh, we have a large tutorial section which give you very specific step-by-step -step details on how to use the product. Uh, so we give you screenshots, um, there's actual YouTube videos and walkthroughs of all the specific things uh, so you can actually uh, do some practice and see um, examples of how to apply those configuration settings. Also, uh, a really awesome thing that you get with our product, if you uh, want to move forward and uh, do that, we actually provide a free, uh, full training uh, session on uh, web meeting, like we're doing now, which is our Kickstart training. Uh, this is a two-hour training, and we include it in any product purchase. Um, so this is a really great opportunity for you to ramp up quickly and in that session, we actually show you step by step. I'll actually show you the settings of building a help desk solution. So that's something that many organizations need. And we do that in Office 365. Um, so that's cool. You, you have something that's going to um, let your team, you know, attend and actually do some training um, instead of uh, just feeling like you're, you're kind of on your own. And then beyond that, we have uh, more formal uh, training available. We do a lot to improve the product. Every month we're coming out with new features and this has been going on for years. At this stage, um, the product is loaded with so many features. There's really a lot of great stuff even when I started working with it five years ago, but every month we've been adding more functionality to it. And um, it's pretty amazing to me how many different things you're able to do in this product. So uh, it's just a really cool aspect of these tools that uh, Pretty much continuously, you're going to discover more and more things that you can do with it um, until you kind of get to the point where I am, where um, I really um, just don't even want to be in a world where I don't have the, this kind of flexibility and tools available in terms of developing solutions. 
Um, so we have lots of great examples on our site. We blog post on that. We send newsletters. Um, so we really try to keep open communication with our customers. Um, support is included with the product. If, if you get that kind of package, um, we've got our pricing up there. Um, let's go ahead and do a drawing for uh, shirts real quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is in the chat, if you guys want to enter um, a number uh, one to a hundred, and I'm going to give you guys um, a little bit of time to enter that, and then I'm going to announce a winner. So uh, go ahead and enter numbers for me when you're ready. Give you guys about 15 more seconds, then we're going to go ahead and give a shirt. And I just want to mention this does have to be in the U.S. And the reason is because shipping is really expensive to send shirts out of the of the United States. All right, got anybody else? Three, two, one. All right, um, I have a winner. Okay, hopefully I say this name right. Um, Judy Cor Cordus. Cordus. Um, if you can send me an email, Judy, my email is Will C at InfoWiseSolutions.com, W-I-L-L-C at InfoWiseSolutions.com. Go ahead and let me know your address and your shirt size. We'll get you taken care of. Um, I did see a lot of questions in the chat during our session. Uh, one of my colleagues, Vladi, has uh, been trying to answer that for you. If for any reason um, you didn't get your question answered, there's more you want on that, um, feel free to email me direct. Um, I just uh, mentioned my email, or you can email our sales team, sales at InfoWiseSolutions.com. And another thing I mentioned, um, if you really want the opportunity to talk to us uh, directly, uh, absolutely feel free. We'd be very happy if you want to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one demo. To sign up for that, just click on the Request a Demo button, and uh, we can get into things that are more specific to a project that you're working on or particular things that you want to know about the product. So you can just sign up to the website there. Um, so that's pretty much everything um, I had to show for our presentation today. I really appreciate you guys' time. Um, I hope you <laughs> feel my enthusiasm for the product. Obviously, we're a business and we want to get customers, but we really do have a passion for the for these tools. And um, as, a, uh, as a developer and somebody who, who works with several SharePoint clients, I can um, only tell you that um, there is a lot of depth to the product. And really, I can't think of any other um, set of tools out there that gives you um, this much flexibility. Uh, it's really great. Um, I do training sessions with customers, and I hope that I might have the opportunity to interact with some of you guys, either in Kickstart training or in some of the other training that we offer. Um, but a uh, really neat tool set. So I hope you guys get installed with a demo and start practicing with this and uh, that you will uh, have these tools in your organization soon. Thanks again for your time, everybody. Hope you have a great afternoon.